here to talk with us a little more about the connection between music and neurological development is a brain researcher and musician, Stefan Koch from Berlin's own Free University. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Dr. Koch, you're also a psychologist and a sociologist. That's a pretty impressive resume. Um, did learning to play the violin at such a young age turn you into a, a, a genius? I don't think so. But I do think that learning an instrument for a child has a number of beneficial effects for the development of the brain. So, for example, connecting what you feel with your hands and what you feel with your breathing to what you actually hear, developing a, a more fine-grained grain sense of hearing, um, de developing more fine-grained motor skills. These are all skills that help the child then um, develop the language and develop a number of other things that, that are beneficial for the development. So I think music generally helps, yes. What about babies that are still in the womb? We've got this, this is kind of legend that pregnant women should play Mozart or, or classical music um, in, in order to accelerate their child's development before uh, they're even born. Is there any empirical evidence to back that up? No, there's no empirical evidence to back that up, and I'm, I'm a bit skeptic about this. Seems to be a good marketing trick, though. Um, <laughs> what, what does um, seem plausible is that, for example, if, if a pregnant woman is singing the lullabies that she's going to sing after birth to her child already during pregnancy, then this will um, be memorized by, by even by the unborn child. And there's evidence for this. And if the child is then, uh, after the child is, is, is born, uh, singing these songs to the child has tremendously comforting and calming effects. Well, so I, I, I wish you had come in and told me that eight years ago. It would have made my <laughs> life a lot easier. Um, what kind of roles do different types of music play in our, in our brain? Is there a difference between listening to classical music or jazz or metal? Well, no empirical evidence for, for this, unfortunately, so far. I wouldn't really guess so, because um, as the brain in general is interested in music. And whether this music is like Mozart or Elvis Presley, um, certainly has, has you know, different effects on how it is processed in the brain. But in general, I, I don't think that there's a difference in, in terms of the beneficial effects, if, if you want to put it that way. Now, do you think there's some sort of evolutionary basis for, for our affinity for music, or is it something cultural? I'm convinced that there's something evolutionary there. If you think about it, every culture that we know around the globe, around, uh, through history, has made music and, and individuals have en enjoyed making music and listening to music. Um, we, we have such an affinity for music, I guess, because it, has full, it fulfills so many social functions and also it has some, so, so, uh, so much to do with our language. We, we also speak with melodies and with rhythms and with different timbres to express ourselves. Now, your research um, has to do with therapies for treating stroke patients. Explain to us a little bit, just briefly, how, how music can help in that area. Well, music activates um, a number of structures in the brain. And after a stroke, uh, such activation is beneficial either for the neural tissue around the stroke, um, to, to keep it alive, if you want to put it that way, and also to transfer the lost functions to other structures in the brain. So in this regard, music is a very promising tool in, in the treatment of uh, stroke patients. All right, Stefan Kroos, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.